Here at the Yuba City Levee failure location for a big press conference with the floodplain managers. Thursday, the 3rd of August. It's a tight fit. <laughs> what happens when you have a press conference on the construction site? Yeah, I know. <laughs> active construction. This is Juan Brown on top of the levee right here at the Marysville Yuba City area, right near where the Highway 20 bridge crosses. This is the Feather River. The maximum capacity of the Feather River at this point is about 170,000 CFS, 170,000 cubic feet per second. That's why the maximum operational limit up at Oroville is about 160,000 CFS. Remember last year they got it up to about 100,000 CFS. You got to add the difference, you got some more tributaries of water adding to this difference to get to this point. Once the two rivers merge, the um, Feather and Sacramento River, it opens up to a whopping 320,000 CFS capability downstream of here. We just got done with a big press briefing here today and uh, the mainstream media is going to go home and show everybody <laughs> what all the politicians had to say, but it took me some question took me a while to get to the bottom of what are we celebrating here today. Well, much of the levee system here along the Feather River system has been repaired with a slurry cutoff wall, but this three mile section right here in the Yuba City area where they suffered some, some um, boils and seepage out of this levee system, this section of levee was, the repair of this section of the levee was delayed. Why? Because in the last high water flood event in the late 90s, a slurry cutoff wall was installed in here and it was thought to believe to be thought that that slurry cutoff wall was sufficient well after further testing it was determined that that slurry cutoff wall was insufficient and a, an, a, an entire additional slurry cutoff wall is being applied right now to this three mile section of levee in the yuba river system or in the yuba city area so my next question is okay great what's a slurry cutoff wall what's the engineering going on here they're going to pull off the top of this levee a little bit and inside the middle of this levee is a wall that's about three feet wide and about 75 feet deep and a mixture of slurry and gunite was the original configuration i believe to prevent the seepage of water that engineering has proved to be less than desirable and so they're going to go ahead and add an entirely new slurry cutoff wall in this three mile section on the water side of the old wall, three feet wide, 70 or so feet deep. That gets it well below the level of the river here. And that wall is just gonna be a, a slurry of soil and gravel and a few other components such that it's a, a self-sealing sort of a, a cutoff wall for moisture intruding through the levee system. And what we're really celebrating today is the fact that they've been able to get this approved and they're going to get it done before november 1st one month into the flood season which starts on the first of october of this year a process that would have normally taken years of red tape to get approval and to get constructed they got it approved and they're going to get it built this year and i think it's primarily based on the example set up there in Oroville this year of how fast they've been able to move and cut through the red tape up there in Oroville. They were able to take that same model down here <clears throat> and get this levee repaired this fall. The Feather River Levee, Yuba City, California. Now mind you, the water level here, even with this uh, lower water level, is higher than the roads below you.
Thanks everybody for coming out on this uh, beautiful, cool day in downtown Yuba City. My name is Mikey Amina. I'm the executive director of the Sutter View Flood Control Agency. Uh, I'm not going to do too much talking. There are more important people. Who are so we had a lot of speeches from major player politicians in the local area congratulating themselves for a job well done. But without a public address system, it's kind of hard to hear them anyways. But I still didn't get to the bottom of the issue here until until I was able to do some one-on-one -on -one questioning with some of the main players. Regulator, the community for being so patient with us uh, during this period of advanced construction that you're going to be hearing about. Do you know offhand, does this add any additional capacity to this levy system, this emergency, or just ensures what we got? Yes, ensures okay. what we have. And so, like, for, for instance, this last, even though we had those storm events, mm -hmm. the, the height of the levy is not a problem, mm -hmm. so the capacity is, is good. Um, it was the duration of the time that the water, which never even increased above monitor stage in most cases, sat on these levees, mm -hmm. and put pressure on the levees. So mm -hmm. the, the problem with most of the levees around here is under seepage and through mm -hmm. seepage. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to address. And it's kind of an inspect and repair as necessary sort of project? No, in fact, um, here's a yeah, yeah. sheet on oh, our larger okay. project. So, you know, it covers, you know, we're looking at a the A major entire, redo of a lot right, of Right, and okay. so we're almost done with, um, from Star Bend all the way north. Mm -hmm. Now, we excluded this three segment, uh, three mile segment of levee because it had previously been repaired mm -hmm. um, back in uh, early Ten. 2000. Now, oh. 2000, uh -huh. it, after that 97 high right. water event, mm -hmm. it was repaired by the Corps and they installed a slurry wall. Mm -hmm. um, so, when we planned our project, we you know relied on, on that mm -hmm. slurry wall. Mm -hmm. um, so, we excluded it. Well, we, last year we started to, to see some signs that mm -hmm. perhaps, you know, that the wall, needed some attention. Yeah, uh -huh. Right? We did some further testing and then it was really put through the test during uh -huh. the spring storm events where we saw seepage all the way out into these buildings uh -huh. here. We had the boil. Mm -hmm. And so clearly it became a, a, an emergency critical issue. Mm -hmm. So, and so the state came through with the funding in record time. The core turned around a permit in a time period, time frame that I'm unheard of, right? Right, has never been done before <laughs> uh -huh. to allow us to get it done mm -hmm. this flood season. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be working, you know, six to seven days a week. At some points, we're going to be doing 24 seven hour, mm -hmm. 24 seven. seven day a week <laughs> construction mm -hmm. um, just to get it done. Mm -hmm. Great. So now this this doesn't include any uh, dredging or cleaning out of the river no, at this point, no. right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. later on down the road. Yeah, that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother issue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if I had a dollar for yeah, yeah. time, you get get that question. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> Excellent. No, no, this is this is going to be the installation of a three foot wide slurry wall through this right. two point nine miles. Segment. Very good. Excellent. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Uh -huh. Here's the businesses she's referring to right alongside the levee here. And I believe it was 99. 99. And you had a big high water event, right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. the 97 storms. Mm -hmm. Evacuations. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's when they, they had the problems in. So the Army Corps came in, repaired this under two different contracts. Mm -hmm. But at the time, they used a soil cement bentonite process. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a thinner wall. So are you talking about the entire levee or are you talking about a portion of the levee? Well, there's a wall through the center of the levee. Okay. The, the entire area. A cutoff wall. A cutoff wall. They call it a cutoff wall. Is it anything? It's not like a, the sea can't cut off wall that they're building at Orville. No, no, today. no. It's, flex, uh, it's no. flexible. Yeah, this is a flexible clay It's made, made of soil, bentonite uh -huh. clay, uh -huh. and this wall, they mix cement in it. Uh -huh. And what we're finding is that process had problems. So uh -huh. the old walls built under that process, when we actually excavate some, we mm -hmm. find that they have some windows in the wall yeah, or yeah. at the bottom. Uh -huh. They have raveling, mm -hmm. so the water is still nah, able okay. to seep through. Nowadays, we don't use that technology anymore. Mm -hmm. We just use soil and and uh, bentonite clay and mm -hmm. water. And it's uh -huh. all mixed together. Okay. And it has the consistency of like peanut butter. Okay. Very thick. Okay. And, but it's, it can shake, you know, it can move, so it doesn't crack. Uh -huh. And we and we found that the the wall that was constructed back in 2000 it let food leave voids. If yeah, it was, and it, it, but it wasn't deep enough in some oh. areas, and it had some voids. So uh -huh. there's two reasons why the the quality of that wall isn't good. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to come back in and fix it. And your the type of wall you're talking about now is kind of 
self repairable if it yes. if it gets yes, exactly. wet. If there's an earthquake mm -hmm. and there's shaking, it'll settle it'll it back in. It'll just settle and it'll mm -hmm. just settle upon it. Can you give me an idea of the dimensions of this wall on this levee here? Of yeah, how wide so is it's it? three feet wide. Okay. Uh huh. And then it's going to be about once we degrade, we're going to degrade about six or seven feet. Mm -hmm. and then the wall is going to go down about seventy-five to eighty feet Ooh. deep. Uh huh. Yeah. And does that take it down to the bottom of the river level or no, it'll be below below river, well yeah. below yeah. the river level right okay. brings it to more of a more of a, a, a heavy clay or some kind of a foundational <laughs> level mm -hmm. to where it, it goes into something that does not, is not permeable right mm -hmm. where it will not mm -hmm. continue to go underneath so they're trying to get far down as to where the seepage underneath will no longer it is just path. a continuous wall or uh, yes. just as needed yep no uh -huh. it's continuous, continuous. the right. entire 2.9 right. miles and pretty much right down the middle of the levee correct right. well, we're going to construct it parallel to the existing wall so we're going to go okay so you have two walls basically. so we will yeah ah, the existing great. wall will right. stay in place uh -huh. <laughs> the new wall will be pretty much water side of the existing wall. on the water side of the on existing the side. Okay. There's some areas where it's tight we may have to veer off to the land is that going to require you to widen the tops of these levees you no. have room to work with no when you yeah. come back in december it'll look exactly like it uh -huh. does now it won't look any different and then you don't need to mess much with the sides of the levee with this no, project no yeah. the slopes are fine yeah. slopes yeah. and everything's great yeah. any boil spots you just repair those as necessary i suppose yeah i mean this wall is going to do the repair that's uh -huh. needed it's going to stop the boil yeah. cool cool yeah. all right the yeah. depth special excellent finally thanks for the explanation yeah, that finally explains why we're here today right. is this wall exactly <laughs> thanks guys that is why we're here because these businesses experienced uh considerable seepage this yeah. past winter like mm -hmm. they had six to eight inches of water in their in their businesses mm -hmm. and it was coming up and through the levee excellent now do you think much of the rest of the levee system is going to see a similar treatment after they see well, we've this constructed, or done? we've done? constructed yeah. pretty much 37 miles of okay levee same thing got this we've been working tomorrow. since 2013 continuous. and this area was delayed only because it had the existing wall correct all right it was yeah. it was thought to have been adequate oh, okay. but, uh, gotcha. with testing and drilling and stuff they found out that uh, it needs help. previous yeah. engineering <laughs> standards thoughts of that uh, had flaws in it mm -hmm. and so they are some of the failures of it so Correct. going back and getting it with the newer higher level technology that we know that does work and what's the technical name for this wall again it's a seepage barrier seepage it's barrier a, a wall. slurry cutoff wall yeah. slurry cutoff it. that's yeah. it slurry, slurry cutoff, cutoff wall, wall. Because because it cuts off seepage going Got either it. through or underneath and the it's levee. basically made out of slurry yep mm -hmm. the slurry is, a, is a and of, and yeah. are the existing soil mm -hmm. yeah very good all, mix it up okay yeah excellent thanks yeah. guys You're all right welcome. we'll spread the word Okay, I finally figured it out today. It's the slurry cutoff wall is what we're working on here. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And, and, and I got the difference now between the existing wall and the fact that it needs some help. Now, what about the rest of the levy system and the fight for money for the long term? What would what do you say? Twenty billion over thirty years, something like that. Right. What's how's that fight going in that's, Sacramento? That still goes on. Yeah. I mean, I mean so this year, you know, Senator Nielsen and I are really pushing. Hey, let's just get started with a hundred million a year mm -hmm. general fund contribution mm -hmm. as, a, as a general taxpayer dollar. So you single-handedly were able, well, you and Jim were able to get that. Well, we weren't able to get it through, and now that, that's a problem. So I mean, See? we want to, you know, we weren't able to get in the budget, and so we're going to keep calling for that. And then, you know, long term, yeah, we are going to have to figure out, hey, how do we go about fixing this infrastructure? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's, yep. it's basic infrastructure yep. that needs to be repaired and, and kept up. And, you know, this is, a, this is an important project here. But, yeah, like you said, there's other projects throughout the system mm -hmm. that we've got to get done. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so that's a common thread in my videos is folks say, well, it looks like misappropriation of funds. Or, I mean, not, uh, mis in this case, I would say it's not enough. Funds. Not yeah, enough funds. Not, for not this, a misappropriation. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to levies, it's just that we haven't put in the investment that uh -huh. we need to put in. Mm -hmm. These are old. This right. is an old system. Right. Very old system. That, right. That's been developed around. And oh. um, you know, look. I mean, there's there has been a lot of good work done over the last ten mm -hmm. years. I would say. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, let's do it. Stuff on this side of the river over there, Trillia, yeah. on the, uh, Plumas Lake, mm -hmm. you know, the Matomas well, levees, the West Sacramento. Uh, but you know, there's still, I mean, there's thousands of miles of levees uh -huh. that protect this central yes. valley, and yep, you gotta, yep. you gotta get, to, mm. you know, make improvements throughout the system. So. Yeah. How much? How much of that does? Gov how much heat does Governor Brown take for this? 
remember the way this this money game works. Is, is he a large part of uh, the large part of that, or a small part of that, or is it? Well, look. I mean, the governor has a, a lot of influence over how the budget mm -hmm. gets done. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, he could really make this a priority. I mean, he uh -huh. could he could make the levy the levy system a priority and, and ensure that there's money in there. And mm -hmm. so that's something that we really have encouraged him to do. Yeah, and, uh, it, and he's and well, it didn't happen this year, but we're not we're not giving up. Uh, you know? Wow. So, yeah. Interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah, All then, right. Yeah, Oroville is you know is is the other big part of the story, which is uh, we need to make sure that that's put back in place, and they're making good strides yeah, to do that. Yeah, it's looking good. In fact, uh, it seems to me that it's the um, progress they've made in Oroville that kind of set the groundwork for you guys to be able to get the money together quickly and the red tape cut to get this project done? Um, no, I would say it's a little bit separate. Yeah. Um, on this project, you know, the, the state did come through with funding mm -hmm. for it. Um, the locals had done their homework mm -hmm. and then uh, getting the Corps, the Army Corps was really to, their expedited 408 to get process. get all approved so quickly is what that, I'm impressed And so with. really that's what happened here, right? Mm -hmm. Now we are talking about trying to streamline some environmental and other regulatory mm -hmm. rules mm -hmm. so that we can clean out the channel. Yes, yes, yes. From the dam down because mm -hmm. that's you know, we have a governor's emergency declaration mm -hmm. and we have a lower Feather River corridor management plan that's already in place. Mm -hmm. We're trying to push, hey, let's just try and use some of that to get in there and do some expedited sediment removal mm -hmm. and, and restoration work that needs to be done. Um, and, you know, that's been in place for the dam work, mm -hmm. but we haven't really seen Got anything done on the clean out of right. the channel. And that's what we'd really like to see happen. So that's yeah. like, see that next. It's not a part of this money, not a part of this project, right. but, but is right. on a, right. hopefully a fast track for next. Next up. Right. Good. Very good. All right. Thanks all for right, the info. Hey, Keep up you. the good fight, man. Thanks for <laughs> covering all this stuff. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 No problem. We will. It's been real interesting. This 2.9 mile repair is coming in at $28.5 million, protecting approximately 75,000 people and 6 billion in property, with most of the funding coming from the state of California. And to me, I find it ironic that the wall that took years of study and red tape to approve that included the cement was the wall that failed.